the reaction between halogenoalkanes and aqueous sodium hydroxide. A halogenoalkane can be represented like this with a chloride or with a halogen, typically chlorine or bromine, attached to a carbon, which in turn could be attached to two other hydrogens and here a CH3 group, a primary halogenoalkane, because it contains two hydrogens. A secondary halogenoalkane would contain a CH3 group here, and a tertiary halogenoalkane would contain three alkyl groups attached to this carbon. These groups could be CH3 or C2H5 or C3H7. All of these are alkyl groups. In this halogenoalkane, this carbon to halogen bond is a polar one. Owing to the high electronegativity of chlorine, electrons are held much closer to the chlorine, creating a partial positive charge and a partial negative charge. This is known as polarity. The sodium hydroxide produces hydroxide ions, which are nucleophiles because they contain this lone pair seeking a center of positive charge. In so doing, it behaves as a nucleophile or Lewis base. The choice of solvent in this nucleophilic substitution reaction is important, and it is essential to have an aprotic polar solvent. An aprotic solvent would ensure that no OH or NH groups are available to form hydrogen bonds to the nucleophile and they're not able to solvate or surround nucleophile which is the OH with its lone pair. Good solvents that are aprotic and polar include ethyl ethanoate and propanone. Let us now examine the mechanism of this reaction between a halogenoalkane and sodium hydroxide. The active ingredient that comes from the sodium hydroxide is the OH group with its lone pair of electrons. This negative charge seeks out a positive center, which is created as a result of the difference in electronegativity. This type of reaction is termed an SN2 reaction. S for substitution. N for the fact that a nucleophile is involved. A species which behaves as a Lewis base and seeks out a positive center. And finally, a two because the rate of the reaction is dependent upon two molecular entities, the concentration of the halogenoalkane and the concentration of the nucleophile, making this reaction a second order reaction. This SN2 reaction is also characterized by the existence of a transition state. Here you can see the formation of this transition state with the OH approaching from the back side of the molecule, unable to make an approach from the front side because it is blocked by this large BR group. As the OH approaches the positive center with its lone pair, a transition state forms where the OH begins to associate and the BR begins to break its bond. The BR group leaves and is termed the leaving group and the OH group enters to take its place. And as this happens, there is a reversal of the conformation of the halogenoalkane. So if we began the reaction with the R conformation, then we end the reaction with the S conformation. Two optical isomers that rotate the plane of polarized light in opposite directions. This is only possible though when you have a halogenoalkane with chiral carbon or one that is attached to four different groups. Some important points to note in this reaction is the inversion of configuration. The steric hindrance forces the hydroxide to approach from the backside. The stereospecific nature of the reactant and the product, which results from this inversion of configuration, which is termed the Walden inversion. Of key significance in this reaction is the existence of this polarity, 
caused by the difference in electronegativity. And here you can see the nucleophile approaching the positive center. In this particular case, an inversion of configuration would not be relevant because we do not have a chiral carbon.